Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mumpuleki Makwana from Prime Coaching and remember this is Celebrating Greatness, a segment where we celebrate individuals who are making a difference in our communities. Today I have none other than Coach B.F. Rams. Coach, welcome to the segment. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time being here. Thank you for having me, man. Right. Uh, I, I remember something interesting uh, yeah. on the talk that you gave uh, some time ago uh, right. when you were talking on the real motivation yeah. and you talked about you sat down against the wall and you started crying. Yes. And from there, you locked yourself in the room and started reading as much as reading and yes. you came out of the room a different person. Exactly. Tell us about that moment and what was happening and what led you to being here today. Well, I believe that every one of us in life, we have a defining moment. Yeah. And those defining moments determine what becomes of you. If you handle those defining moments correctly, you become a better person. Yeah. But if you don't handle them correctly, you become a victim of life. Yeah. Blaming situations, blaming what happened. So at that point in time of my life, I had just come from the university. And um, I mean, I, okay, I finished well and good in my O levels. Yeah. Went to university in South Africa to do engineering, and I didn't do well. So yeah. I moved from engineering to become in accounting. Didn't do well as well, and then the, the university said I should take a break and go home. So I came back home. I went to the University of Botswana. I did BSc. I lost interest and I left. And at this point now, I sat with myself and I wondered, I was a good student, good yeah. marks, promising future, but here I am now and nothing seems to be going well for me. Yeah. I applied for jobs, they were not getting me and it was frustrating. So one time when I was in the house, all those thoughts came in, look at yourself. Yeah. And I began to cry. It was a heartbreaking moment. But I thought to myself, after I read one book, Success Through Positive Mental Attitude by Napoleon Hill, yeah. which I found in a bus, it wasn't even mine. Yeah. And he said, if I can change my thinking, I can change my life. It's like he was writing that book for me. Yeah. And it was so personal. And I began to read as much as I could because yeah. I felt like if I couldn't pass at school, am I really stupid? So let me take the knowledge that I want into myself, yeah. self-education. Yeah. So I began to read as many books as I could, which has now become a habit that you know, I've embraced yeah. and out of reading those books I realized that there is something in me that the world needs yeah. and I began to distribute that knowledge to other people which eventually led me to being a public speaker. Yeah. It wasn't by choice at the beginning, I never said that and said yeah. I want to be a public speaker yeah. Yeah. and I was just talking to people one on one and yeah. I realized they were interested in it yeah. and then one time when somebody called me to do motivation for their company I was, I was amazed. Yeah. Can that happen? You will pay somebody to talk to you. I yeah. thought everybody knows these things. Everyone can talk. <laughs> and yeah. the journey began from there. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to start with that story before I yeah. introduce that right now you are a spiritual leader. You yes. know, there's a church that you are heading. Yes, and sir. also now you are doing motivation. And one place that I really, really love that you are into is also marketplace effectiveness. Yes. You know, helping companies to grow. There are so many. I, I, I was looking at your profile. Yes. There are so many organizations that you have worked with. Yes. And from a distance as an individual, BF Ram Sohitila. That's why I'm wearing a t-shirt today. What would BF Rams do? You chose the path of studying and self-education. Yeah. Talk about that today, you know, in a community where there's so much information yeah. because we have social media, we have a lot of content that is moving every single day. Yes. Or just like you're on a content, they phone a report yes. about someone liked your photo. How can someone position themselves yeah. in an era where, in an area where they have goals they want to achieve mm -hmm. and there's so much information that can be distracting sometimes how can you pursue yourself we live in an information age yeah and the information age simply means that everybody is putting out their content yes and sometimes it's not even the right content true, true, the most true, credible true, content true. the working content yeah. so people must be intentional with what they bring their way yeah you spoke that I'm a spiritual leader as well yeah. every beginning of the year after we give the direction of what we want to achieve. Yeah. Uh, this year is our year of growth. Yeah, of growth. And then I, I, I bring out at least 12 books for the people that if you want to grow, yeah. in line with this topic, if you want to grow, these are some of the books that you can read, which can empower you and help you to be a better person. Intentional learning, yeah. self-education. Someone said uh, formal education can uh, make you money, yeah. but formal, uh, informal money. education yeah. will make you uh, wealth, a fortune. Yeah. Yeah. So it's most important for people to be intentional with what do I bring my way? 
sometimes you find information that you didn't you, you didn't have any choice on maybe you are listening to a radio station you are hearing this and that whatever you bring in builds you up yep. so you have to be intentional with what builds you up if you are getting embrace your greatness yep. you're saying I'm trying to create my own economy yep. and then if you get another book that you know this is going to help me with my emotions with my love life yep. with my career with my this and that it's unfortunate how some people are not intentional with what they bring into their minds yep. especially the working community yeah, yep. we are so busy uh, functioning, we don't sharpen ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I think it's in the seven habits of effective people. Yeah. And he speaks about a gentleman who was hired to cut some logs. Yeah. And this gentleman cut a certain number one day, the first yeah. day. Second day, the number went down. Apologized to the boss. Third day, fourth day. Yeah. And one time the boss said to him, are you sure you have sharpened your ex? Yeah. He said, sir, I don't have time to sharpen my ex. I just gotta get, I to, just work. get to work. And the boss said, if you sharpen your ex, you will do it better. So done. the working yeah. community, most of the times, they are busy working mm. eight hours a day, sometimes a little over time and all of that. Weekends, they say they are resting mm. and they never really empower themselves intentionally. Mm. When they say they are empowering themselves, they yeah. mean taking a short course. Yes. A short course, mm. yes, it will empower your career, but not you as an individual. True, true. And that's most important for us to create time to study, to read. Fifteen, If you read 15 minutes a day, yeah. at the end of the... Uh, of, 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 of the year, you would have read uh, approximately 1 million words. Mm. Yeah. 15 minutes a day. Start yeah. your day, read something. Yeah. End the day, read something. You would have read so many words that your mind will be changed. You are more positive. You are more, you know, driven in yeah. life. And, and talking about, especially talking about the community where the working class are the ones who are not really much sharpening themselves. Yeah. You know, I December I committed my time to listen to Dr. Miles Mendel. Yeah. And one of the things he talked about was your, your career prepares you for your deployment. Yes. Like your, 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 where you are, your job prepares uh -huh. you for deployment. Mm -hmm. And we are finding areas where even last year, some companies we know, yeah. and they were, you know, retrenching. Yes. And you find that people, maybe they say, ah, no, I'm with a company. Ah, like a regular 30 years, I'm going to yes. But your experience, yes. But the company now, you're on it, it can no longer go forward. With and you. sometimes yeah. because of the people who are not refining themselves in that company. Yes. Now, we we end up finding where, how to really help people think what they want to do. Yes. Exactly. How do we talk to people, especially being intentional in that field, to say your job, like you always say, mm -hmm. I listen to you a lot on Gap, uh, Gaps FM yeah. on the midday fix. Yes, sir. Like, how do you prepare people to be in a position where they understand from day one, someone is going to get a job, I will be watching the interview. Yeah. How, how can they be ready into deploying themselves? See, your job is not your end. Exactly. It's an opportunity to expose you to greater, uh, you know, avenues that yeah. you can venture into. Some years ago, I called a number of my protégés and I was talking about um, making an enterprise out of your career. Yeah. You will find a teacher who has been teaching for 30 years. Yeah. You can't even write one book in that topic. You have been an English teacher for 30 years. Yeah. You can't write a textbook. It's because of the makeup of their minds. Yeah. You think, I'm just a teacher, I will end and life goes on. It's more like creating multiple streams of income. Yeah. Your end income is not the end of your income. Yeah. What you earn yeah. is not the last. Yeah. Your end income must be the starting point for every other income. So you use it to create multiple streams of income. Your job is not your end. Your job exposes you to what you can do. It gives you an opportunity to refine your skills yeah. and eventually get into what can be yours. Yeah. So you find that people retire to retire. Yeah. They retire from their jobs to retire from life yeah. and they feel useless. Yeah. You mean your 50 years of experience, your 30 years of experience, now you're going to sit back. Anybody who's following their purpose, they never retire. Perfect. At 80, you are still active. So the purpose of your career is to test your skills, to test your abilities through another person's company. Yeah. 
So yeah. I see if my ideas are viable, if I am effective in what I'm doing, and eventually I land into what is mine. Yeah. This is where the power of informal education comes in because the more you read, the more you are exposed to the treasures that are inside you. Yeah. And you realize I'm not just an accountant, I'm not just an, uh, an engineer. I can also start up my own thing yeah. and when I live here I have a game plan. Talking about the game plan, you know, I did my presentation on the game plan. Yeah. Many people don't have a game plan. They think what they have, they will have it forever. Mm. Even though at the back of their minds, they know that this is not forever. Yeah. So they don't plan for retirement. I was called to one company some years ago, and these people were supposed to be getting retired. Yeah. And they were asking, give me at least one more year. I'm still paying for my house. I'm still paying for the kids. I'm still paying for the car. Now, you have been working here for 25 years. You knew that this day will come. Yeah. You never prepared for it. Yeah. Many people prepare for a career they don't prepare for life hmm. and then at the end of their life they leave regretting saying I should have done this I should have done that so they have become the victims of their careers yeah. and they feel like I spent all my years for somebody's wealth hmm. but that person did not say spend your life for me I will give you an opportunity hmm. to get experience to get some networks I give you an opportunity to make money that whenever you want to start your own you have your savings hmm. you have the experience you, you, you can have tell the you have the network so you can start your own mm. but many don't think so mm. we can simply say they are not intentional with their lives and their future so in other words people who are not really productive is the, you, you can trace it to do you have a vision yes. people who have a vision they, they, they will not be idle they are always yeah. using every moment to learn and to, to benchmark and to grow. exactly and talking about benchmark I think yeah. one of the areas that have worked for you is the cycle of you know mentorship yes. you know, people who helped you to become the best version of you mm -hmm. and I can see that now you are making part of your culture you have started Le Premier at yes. University of Botswana where you are working with the young people you know to cultivate that that mindset of personal leadership yes. let's talk about that where did you see the gap that we end up saying being intentional to say I'm going to create my time every yeah. week I am going to be talking to young people in this area after my failures from the university I sat with some of my protégés around about two three guys yeah and I'll tell them guys hey this is how I blew my opportunities, yeah, man. Yeah. And this is how I ended up failing. Yeah. So I was trying to show them. So I was just talking to them and I realized that the more I talked to them, the more they invited their friends and said, let's yeah. go and listen to this guy. Yeah, yeah. And we are like probably just sitting down, having some fat cakes yeah. and in the so the number was increasing yeah. and we didn't have a formal platform. Yeah. So eventually we said, okay, fine, why don't you go to the university? It didn't even have a name. Yeah. So we asked, we realized that you could get a a lecture theatre yeah. and he got in, did some advertising, took my money from my pocket and put some adverts yeah. and the people started coming. Yeah. Now I realized that many young people are required to make life decisions when they are not empowered to make them. Hmm. So you'll find that you are leaving high school, yeah. you are 17 years old, 18 years old and you are asked which course do you want to take? Question is do I even know where I want to go? Yeah. And then uh, you get any of the courses yeah, yeah. and tomorrow you say, I don't like it. I once did a, a counseling session for a young man who was on his fifth year in the medical school yeah. and said, I want to quit. I'm like, five years and you yeah. want to quit? Yeah. He said, it's not what, what I want to do. Mm. So when I saw that gap that many young people are not empowered to make decisions, yeah. some of them are living by their own limited knowledge. True. They don't have anybody who has gone ahead who said, I walk this path, don't walk here, don't walk here, yeah. do things like this. If I was to be you yeah. or if I was to be your age again, this is what I'll do differently. Yeah. So we decided that, okay, fine, let's do this La Premier session. And my presentation is simply around discovering your purpose, believing in yourself, and then putting some work in whatever you are doing. Yeah. Polishing yourself to be a better version of you from day to day, yeah. you know. And we have, we have had great responses. We have seen some young people, uh, by the time they finish uh, at the university, they have their companies running, yeah. they write books. Yeah. Uh, one of the youngest authors in my mentoring program is 18 years old. Yeah. And you know how he wrote this book? Mm. He heard one of my statements, authors are no better people they are people who value their thoughts yeah. and they put them down they and they publish them yes and i <laughs> said to them 
what we had the investor said imagine if you write a book about your first year experience your second year your third year your mm. fourth year you have four chapters already <laughs> and then looking forward to the workplace you have the fifth chapter yeah. and then you have the other chapter of high school what are you expecting going mm. to invest mm. this young man was doing was in his high school moments yeah and then he started writing the title of the book he came and said effective living in school you yeah. know was talking about peer pressure, mm. family pressure, mm. setting your own goals. Mm. He, he finished high school, I think he had about 46 points or something like yeah. that, or over 40 points. Yeah. So we have empowered some of these young people uh, who have become or made some right decisions in life and they are looking forward to the future. All that young people need is somebody who can hold their hand and say, this is the way walk in this way yeah. all they need is someone they can call and say sir i just made this mistake mm. what are you saying I, I, i've sat with many who have failed academically yeah. Yeah. and they say coach uh, i've disappointed my parents uh, things are not working da, 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 da. what do i do and we empower them all around love life this and that and you find that the moment you give them those tools yeah. they are willing to put them at work many a times even parents don't really seek their children to get to know what you want out yeah, of life yeah. but when the child fails they don't even get to ask how did you fail they're like how can you fail i gave yeah. you everything i could yeah. and then now sitting with them sitting with them and giving them these tools mm. has helped them a whole lot. Yeah. They are looking forward to the future. They are dreaming again, and they feel like um, I can achieve anything I want to yeah. achieve. So we set up that La Premier, and it has created great stories, great testimonials of young people that are doing well in their lives. I, I've been part of La Premier, and yes. it has helped me effectively. <laughs> uh, and and not talking about that, there's a, there's a message you once talked about, which touched me. Yeah. My next ten years. Yes. You know, I think <laughs> most of the time we look at it's a new year yeah and we end there yeah it's 2019 it's 2020 and that has changed a lot because now most uh, the, the information you talk about is total life fulfillment yes and total life fulfillment besides mentorship we have relationships yes. and I have seen you establishing a movement yes. the love chain yeah which is focused on establishing relationship dynamics mm -hmm. you know helping people to relate not only but also in how do we relate with other people yes so I, I want you to talk about that which gap did you see that end up you know getting you to go into that space you know when I, when I when I did the teaching of the next 10 years yeah I thought to myself uh, 10 years ago where was I yeah so I deducted 10 from my current age yeah and I, I realized, oh I was at this stage but look where I am now yeah see so much change yeah. so i went even to my protégés and i said to them deduct 10 years from your age now yeah. how old were you some 10 years ago yeah. and i asked the question where you are now mm. was it where you wanted to be 10 years ago <laughs> or you didn't know that you can be intentional yeah, and create yeah, your future yeah. so i said well maybe you didn't know this then but you have the next 10 years to live for mm. intentionally create that 10 years yeah. and I, I i gave a document of the next 10 years how to have that vision of the next 10 years and yeah. breaking it down into every year yeah. so that every year fits the next until by the end of those 10 years you have achieved whatever you wanted to achieve yeah. and in that uh, document it, in, it included your health your relationships different areas yeah. finances yeah. the associations, associations that you have and you ask well. yes your career yeah. you ask questions like um, um, who are the most uh, toxic people in my life exactly. and then, then you put three of them yeah. who are the people that I need the most and then these ones what do I do with them yeah. so people have to be intentional with their future whether we like it or not we are going to the future and so you just have to be intentional with it yeah. and create your future don't get to the future you have not prepared for yeah and so um i, I did that presentation and try to make it practical with that document for everyone to yeah. fill it in and then some years ago i remember around february i was passing by one store and i saw their decoration for for valentine yeah and I'm like, oh, I love decorative stuff. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, when are we going to decorate with this in, 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 in uh, a church and all of that? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, but you don't have a platform for this. Yeah. And I thought, why don't you do something? Yeah. And I came up with the name, the love train. Yeah. The love train is not uh, like a train, a transportation device. Yes. It, is, it is the train of training. Yeah. So the love train is training in love. Yeah. And I thought, people are trained to be accountants, mm. to be engineers, this and this and that, but we are not trained to be in love. Mm. And we get into relationships by 
you know, chance. Yeah. Oh, maybe this girl, I can hit it off with her and we can be good. Yeah. Don't even know what to expect. And then when probably she doesn't do something you like, you say, we break it up and then yeah. you are heartbroken. You don't know how to deal with the heartbreak. And then you don't know when to get married. You get married because the parents are saying you are of age and then you must have children. I'm like, no, let's train people on these things. Yeah. Yeah. So I began to read more on around the issues of love. And then we started this program around love issues. Yeah. The idea of the love train is effective love lives. Yeah. The idea of the love train is uh, building yourself as an individual. Yeah. Once I am whole, people like say, I want my better half. Mm -hmm. You don't need a better half. You need a better whole. Because yeah. if, they, if they are half, it means that part of them is not there. Yeah. So the idea was, let's build people to be whole. By the time they get into a relationship with another person, they are emotionally balanced, balanced yeah. uh, financially they are on point, yeah. uh, knowing how to deal with another person. If you are a good steward with your life, yeah. you can be able to add, add someone into your life. Yeah. Handling issues of the past, past experiences and all of that. And then not only that, once you are covered as an individual, when you get into a relationship, what should I expect? How do I relate with someone else? This person comes from a totally different background than mine. Yeah. And so I can't expect them to be me, which is one of the challenges in relationships. People yeah. think that now that I'm with you, you have found me like this, be like me, this is what I like. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then getting married, uh, knowing when is the right time. Yeah. But the most important is the post-marital mentoring. Yeah. Mentoring does not end when you get what you want. Yeah. If Makwana is mentoring somebody in writing their books, the yeah. person writes a book and then never talks to Makwana because they are thinking, I'm also an author. Yeah, yeah. You need to know, mm. how do I market my book? Mm. When the sales are not on point, uh, do I write another book or I should focus on the previous one? Yeah. This is the post writing. Yeah. So post marital uh, mentoring yeah. where we are monitoring you to ensure that you don't end up in divorce to ensure that you are not just stuck in a marriage you yeah. don't want yeah. you know so we've had so great reports where we are seeing uh, people getting married yeah. and uh, people knowing how to deal with breakups of relationships people knowing how to handle past issues the love train is coming this um, February, off, February uh, yeah, yeah and, and the theme for it is together is beautiful together is beautiful yeah now, the concept of together is beautiful is to say let's celebrate the union of people yeah but I'm not gonna study from the together is beautiful because mm. if I come wounded our togetherness won't be beautiful yeah, true. I'll be bleeding everywhere around yeah. so if I sit with somebody that I'm in love with and I'm bleeding yeah. the moment they say something mm. i jump to defending myself because i've been wounded before yeah. so people need to know how to heal from the past yeah. and make their current or whatever marital dreams they have yeah. to be so beautiful yeah. so we have seen great reports we have seen great some people come married and yeah. they are like oh if we had known this before yes. things could have been different yeah. others came wounded sexually abused and they don't want to be in a relationship they have they others come from divorced families yeah. and they are like man i don't think i want to get married ever in my life yeah. others come from broken houses and they they, they 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 did not they grew up without knowing their father they don't know what it means to be a dad and all of that and in assisting them we realize that everyone has a potential to be great yeah. all they need is someone who can hold them by the hand and I've committed myself to holding people by the hand yeah. and to ensure that they reach their destiny in their love lives in their uh, personal dreams in the various areas that they, that they want to see positive change yeah I, I can see that from all most every program that you do yeah. it's always begin with an individual yes personal growth is very important yes sir. everything rises and falls with personal development yes let's talk about what you do also yeah. you, are, you are a spiritual leader one of the things that you you are really intentional about and yeah. that i've seen that have helped you a lot is you expose yourself a lot you yeah. travel a lot and not only traveling you do these international gigs and helping other yeah. organizations to grow yes. how has that helped you in building you as a leader as a speaker and as a mentor without exposure you are limited to yourself you don't know who else is doing what you want to do. Yeah. In what ways are they doing it? If you can't benchmark, you can never refine anything. Imagine somebody wanting to be the champion of a 100 meter race. Yeah. And they don't know who is the current record holder. Yeah. And how many seconds they ran in that race. So getting to know who ran this race for what uh, amount of time. time yeah. Now makes, when you are practicing, you know, I want to beat this time. Yeah. 
Many people are doing things they are not exposed in. So exposing yourself, going to different places, it also gives you, you know, the ability to think bigger because you are seeing things at a different level. Yeah. So I, I would go to the USA and when I get there, I see like, ah, they are living life like this. Mm. Cars that are current here, they are like old that yeah. side. Yeah. And then you are, you are engaged with some of my mentors, people who have, who have been in the, who have been in the, in the game for like 30 years, 40 years. I'm like, how have you done it? What kept you going for all these years? Yeah. Exposure is everything. Exposure yeah. refines your mind, refines your dreams. You can be a local player with an international taste. Yeah. That is, you are locally relevant, but internationally as well. If anybody from outside mm. gets your material, gets your book, gets your interview, gets your whatever, they are like, we want this kind. Yeah. So when I go outside, when I meet, go to workshops that are telling me how I can do things differently, think yeah. differently. One time, Makwana, let me tell you the story. I was in the U.S. I was in a meeting with my mentor. Yeah. And here I am. I feel like, okay, where I come from, I, I, I've achieved something. Yeah. But I got into a meeting. I found guys who were younger than me. Yeah. Now, the one that stood out was a young lady who was, I think, four years younger than me. Yeah. And she was running a multi-billion portfolio. Hmm. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I felt like a nobody. Yeah. I felt like, but it encouraged me to say, you can go and push on. So yes. I met with them and I'll discuss with them and I'll say, oh, this is what has worked for them. Yeah. I go back, I can put this on, I can put this on. Exposure is what refines our dreams, gets us to think better, yeah. gets us to know what to implement, what has worked for others and how we can refine on that. You are right. I, I cannot agree more. Yeah. Recently, the, the last, when we go for the Mandela Washington Fellowship, yeah. there was a, an old man, uh, Luis Allegra. Okay. He mentored me into how do we do coaching? All right. How do we curate your content how to wow. you take your brand out there mm. and then i backed it up with uh the conference that i attended in south africa yeah, yeah the robert kiyosaki yes and yes, yes. i saw how at an event motwas and i had a topic 30 minutes yeah about can i product the key get ten thousand pula and the whole <laughs> building stays they just go there and go into biking yeah. water there's a lot we need to learn and yeah. I think learning is what keeps us moving exactly and and like you are saying the exposure now it goes to back to church unusual yes you know how you are doing things mm -hmm. you know it's very different the first time I visited I was wowed if every single day there's something that you want to bring yeah. to the table yeah. you want to do better than last time yes. I remember a statement I was with a friend Kanjo yeah. the author of the book the best version of you very and he book. said to me he said uh, our pastor will not repeat what he taught before because yeah. he was telling me a certain topic <laughs> okay no let me go today maybe he will he said no he will not repeat <laughs> what he, he will want to go further yeah. into helping you to grow yeah and how has that been for you leading you know a youthful you know generation yeah. which is willing to go beyond yeah. so it means you have to grow 10 times them yes. so that you can provide that <laughs> hub of mentorship how is that for you? man church unusual and that statement is to come the, 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 the greater one is um, total life fulfillment. Total life fulfillment. So the idea is life is for living. Yeah. And people want to be empowered to live it better. Yeah. And that's what made us as a church to come up with programs that are relevant. Yeah. So we'd have the love train, we'd yeah. have Workers Summit, yeah. Millionaire Club. Yeah. We'll have all these programs. Leadership Summit. Leadership well. Summit. Yeah. And when we do all these things, because we want people to be empowered. By the time you leave a church service, yeah. you should have some points in your mind, yeah. some statements that are boiling in your heart saying, I gotta change things, I gotta do things differently, I gotta improve myself. And so, Every topic of the month, like yeah. uh, we don't do hit and run topics. Yeah. We, we come up in a month and then we're teaching something throughout that month. Yeah. By the end of that time, you understand the topic, you know the steps to take, you know the benefits of this thing. Yeah. And it's not just about, um, if I was to say it this way, being spiritual. Yeah. Spirituality is effective living. Yeah. For me, spirituality is effective living. Yeah. When you live well, then you are really being spiritual. Yeah. Not when you expect spooky things that you yeah. don't understand. Yeah. So we'll come up with programs like Millionaire Club where we, we will teach people how to create multiple streams of income, yeah. how to uh, get their ideas working, how to generate co uh, commercial ideas, all of those. And yeah. um, um, 
I've seen how when people now put God into this. Yeah. I remember last year we did a program. It was the Father's Day. Yeah. So the, the theme of it was my father, my hero, yeah. my superhero. Yeah. So all the gentlemen, we ordered some superhero costumes. Yeah, yeah. And every man in the church was wearing superhero costumes. Yeah. I was putting on Superman, they would have yeah. Thor, yeah. all kinds of Spider-Man. Yeah. And the idea was, let's talk to men. Before I am a superhero, mm. I am, in my case, I was wearing Superman, yeah. I am Clark Kent. Yeah. So I have scars, mm. I'm a normal man, but I can turn into a superhero. So we are sure. showing the men that yeah. you don't always have to be a superhero. Yeah. And imagine how many men came through and they were touched by that. The yeah. year before, we were talking about men being touched with their emotions. Yeah that men don't always be macho. They say boys don't cry. Yeah. But hey, you, 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 you can also cry and still be a strong man. Yeah. And we just sat down and talked to the men. Like we had a coffee table, yeah. man, and we sat down, you know, talking to the men, how was your growing up? Mm. How was your father treating you? People were coming up with how they could not relate with their dad. Some say, I don't know my father. Some say, I saw my father abusing my mom. Yeah. It instilled something in me that I don't want to be a man. Others this, others that. So it's all about, um, relevance yeah it's all about relevance and the young people oh man you give them relevance you give yeah. them what they what, 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 what uh, you, you spoke earlier about a, a fast-paced life yeah trending things yeah. current things yeah. current things everyone must be current your company must be current mm. you know the the famous story of the Nokia boss who yes. said we didn't do anything wrong yeah, but you may not do anything wrong but did you did you do something right for this season yeah when iPhone came up the BlackBerry CEO thought it's just a bunch of young guys who are, you know, chancing on the yes, market. True. But where are they now? Yeah. Where is the iPhone? So you have to be relevant. And it, it keeps me on my toes mm. to always have to know what is trending, yeah. to always get to know what um, really hits the core of the young people, the core of the women. Yeah. So we got women in a, a church that we are empowering them, yeah. you know, talking about that. When, when the, one of the fundings of our government came through, we called all the young people and said, we want to help you. Yeah. We did their business plans. We, yeah. we prepared their everything. Wow. I'm glad to tell you, man, that we got, I think, close to 10 of them, that their fundings have been approved to yeah. go and start their business. Exactly. Now, that's called relevance. It is, we yeah. got to know what is happening. Mm. You'll be surprised. I know all the festivals in this country. Yes. Music festivals. Yeah. I can tell you which one happens in Seroe, yeah. Mahalape, Palape, anyway. Why? Mm. Because I want to do festivals that are going to be positive for the young people. True. So everything rises on relevance. Yeah. The day you stop being relevant, you lose the market. Yeah, it's either you're growing or you are dying. Exactly so. So you better choose your side. <laughs> so, the, you know, when talking about that and looking at an environment where so much content is put out there, yeah. you have to be up to toe with what's happening right, right exactly. now. They say when the village stop growing, the bush will overtake the village. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's, it's that same concept. Mm -hmm. Say, as we head towards closing, yeah. you are talking about a year of growth. Yes. And, and I would like, we are starting in another decade. Yes. And talk about or, this, or being authentic, your authentic self. Yeah. You know, this is one thing that most people, they have left their true selves mm -hmm. and they are showing up to the tables and saying the language as if they are that language. Yeah. But we know they are not. And <laughs> at the end of the day, we have people starting businesses to be up to date with their yes. friends and their, fr you know, to please people mm -hmm. talk about putting your true you out there so that at the end of the day you are going to live with yourself yeah you might as well start <laughs> living your true self talk about being the authentic you. see when I talk about my story yeah. most of the times I tell people I don't know any other story except my story <laughs> yeah and you know the interesting thing is even the guys that have heard my story too many times yeah. included yeah oh, oh, when i finish talking about it at any other event they will say i've heard the story too many times but today it was different True. the only story you got is your story yeah the only life you have experienced at a very intimate level is your life yeah and so it's important for you to be yourself yeah to be yourself yes you can refine your talents here and there yeah. but refine them knowing the foundation of who you are yeah you, you, you are a, a great advocate of personal development yeah. as well yeah. developing you being true to yourself I don't do that which I don't flow with yeah and sometimes people ask me how do I discover my purpose I tell them very simple yeah. go to your 
resume. Yeah. On your resume, I know the first page you wrote executive summary yeah. and all those things. Yeah. There is something at the bottom before the referees. Yeah. You wrote hobbies. Yeah. That section is the most important yeah. for your destiny, not mm. your career. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for your career, the executive summary is it's good. Fine. For your future, destiny, uh, that hob yeah. the hobby area. And in your hobbies, it could be singing. Yeah. In your hobbies, it could be uh, I like um, reading novels. I like running. I like running. Yeah. You don't realize that your hobbies are you mm. what can you do my mentor asked me a question mm. that made me to lend into what I'm doing he said yeah. what would you do today even if you are not paid you will do it with your best yeah what would you do today that it will fulfill you and no amount of payment can fulfill you than doing that thing yeah so I, I said I talk a lot yeah I'm talkative if you don't stop me I talk the whole day yeah. so I said this is who I am and what I'm supposed to do yeah. so I went to school I passed my sciences I passed my mathematics I passed my accounting my account and then they said either be an accountant or but best of all go into the science field yeah. so I went to engineering because that's what they said yeah. based on my academics mm. but for me talking is me yeah. and when I talk I'm fulfilled yeah. and so I refined myself around what is naturally me and I presented myself to the world hear this yeah. the world is waiting for you not a better you True. you are not the next Kiyosaki mm -hmm. you are Makwana the original yeah you many are cheap copies of great originals yes. when I copy someone yeah. I will always be referred to oh you look like so-and-so oh you look like so-and-so but when I'm being myself yeah. I'm walking in my path now that does not mean that we, d we don't have theory says 45 percent of the people can do what you do yeah 45 other percentage they can do it better than you mm. but you have a 10% mm. that is your zone yeah so for you to distinguish yourself you must find your zone yeah. a gentleman was hired to come and find out in a refinery yeah. what is wrong with their uh, gas tanks yeah. or why the things are not producing as they wanted yeah. so he got them looked around looked around put an X on one of the gauges yeah. and then he fixed that yeah send them an invoice and ten thousand dollars they are like for what you came for less than five minutes yeah and then they say break it down he said i'm gonna break it down so he said for finding where to put an x yeah nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars yeah. for putting the x one dollar <laughs> now what is he saying yeah you must always know where your X is what is your X your zone what yeah. differentiates you from other people yeah. companies are not looking for employees they are looking for your difference yeah. what can you do differently what distinguishes you from the rest of the people yeah. and sometimes in starting your business authoring books or starting your career whatever your hands finds to do do it yeah. I told you I landed in motivational speaking public speaking not because I wanted it yeah. but when I realized later on that it is me yeah. the path of destiny is not a straight path True. sometimes it can lend you being a petrol attendant yeah. from there you are a waitress yeah. from there you work in a garage yeah. from there you work in this and that and that finally you find your place True. but it has built you until you get where you are yeah. I read a story of a man who was a, a janitor a cleaner yeah. in a, an airport yeah for 24 years yeah. but finally came back to that airport and he was a pilot yeah so a pilot after two, he wasn't working the working there as a janitor he could have ended his dreams mm. but seeing the planes all the time and seeing people passing by pulling mm. their bags and like wow those pilots one day I might be one of them yeah. I want to be one of them but the main thing is this a lot of people lack the drive yeah I've seen in you a greater drive yeah. you don't wait for anybody to give you anything yeah. the world does not owe you opportunities not, yeah. any door that must be opened open the door for yourself yeah. I tell people and I wrote a post the other day of listening to my heart yeah. and I said any door that has ever opened for me I created the doors for myself sure. I created motivational speaking yeah. I was speaking for free to young people mm. and eventually companies needed me mm. but I created that door for myself many people are looking for if so-and-so doesn't help me I'm finished mm. if so-and-so doesn't give me money I'm finished mm. we have a good government we yeah. have fundings yeah. here and there but greater than that mm. have a greater drive for your business have yeah. a greater drive for your career yeah. your boss is not your career yeah. your mother is not your career your siblings are not your career whatever mm. must be of you then it's gotta be through you yeah. put your soul your mind your time invest in it why do you want me to believe in your dreams and invest in it when you are not willing to sacrifice for them yeah in 
investors are not looking for ideas they are yeah. looking for person yeah if you are passionate enough i will invest in your craft true but if you are not passionate enough i won't put my money in so i want to see the track record of your person whatever is to be about you whatever success your company can yeah. have your business your career your academics it's on you take personal responsibility that's it. Coach Bifram, thank you so much for the amazing session. Thank I really you, amazed your contribution. Beautiful. We are looking forward to more. The love train is coming up from the 13th of February. Make yeah. sure that you are part of it. Thank you Beautiful. so much, sir. Thank you. All right.